Hello and welcome to this very different type of video. My name is Hayden Falzon from FalzonFantasy.com and let's get into five things that you may not know about Blender 2.8. These are five things about Blender that you may not know. Number one, different duplication modes. A lot of us use duplication when constructing objects within Blender. The most obvious one is Shift D. It's a very simple duplication and essentially duplicates the object data into new object data. However, one that we may not be aware of is Alt D. The difference between Alt D and Shift D will become apparent when you look at the object data. As you see here, if I go to the context object data, cylinder is the data that's being called upon within this object. It's also the data that's called upon within the object that we duplicated it from. However, the one that we use Shift D is a completely different data set, which means if I go to edit this cylinder, the edits will be unique to this data. However, if I go to edit this cylinder, you'll notice that when I press tab and go into edit mode, that both these cylinders are automatically going to go into edit mode because they are from the same data set, which means that whatever changes we make to one of these cylinders will be reflected upon the other. Number two, collection instances. Similar to the different duplication mode, collection instances allows us to iteratively change our scene while only editing a minimal amount of objects. So if I grab this cryopod mockup that I was creating, move that into a scene, upon moving it into a new collection, I now have access to a different add object type which is the collection instances. I can now see that that collection that I created is now available. So all that I'll have to do is click on it and voila, we have our collection instance. But you will also notice that we can't actually edit it because it doesn't technically exist. However, to make edits to this one, all that we have to do is go to its parent collection and you'll see that we're able to affect change. Number three is checker deselection. This is really useful when creating details in objects such as engines and other circular type of objects. If I go into tab, into this cylinder, and then just delete that little edit that we created earlier, and then go into vertice mode, and use my loop selection tool by holding Alt and selecting between the loop. I may only want to select every nth element. However, there is no easy way to do this, or is there? If I navigate up to select and then down to checker deselect, it's going to allow me to select every nth element. This is a good selection tool for our repertoire and is highly underused. Another selection tool that may be overlooked at times is selecting edges along a loop. This can be illustrated with this cube here. If I select this cube, if I go up here and select my edge selection tool, then come down and hold Alt and select, you'll see that nothing really happens. However, if I go to face mode and hold Alt, you'll see that there is a loop there. So why can't I select all the edges along that loop? Well, we could use a checker deselect, but that's a bit of a waste of time. What we're going to do instead is hold Alt and Control and then right click. And as you can see, we have selected all of the edges along that loop. This can be done for all loops. The fifth and final thing about Blender that you may not know is unlocking object modes. This is incredibly useful when animating objects that have bones. So if I go into my pose mode with my bone selected, you'll notice that I can rotate this object that it's parented to, 
but I can't actually select that object like in 2.79 and below. The way that we can fix this is by unlocking object modes. So if I come up here to edit and then navigate down, you'll see there's this checkbox called lock object modes. All that I have to do is uncheck that. And now when I right click this cube from pose mode, you'll see that it automatically registers that I'm clicking on a new object and it goes to object mode. I can then click back to my pose mode, much like 2.79 and below. So this is an incredibly useful feature to have when you're in the final stages of animating an object within Blender. I hope that you've learned something new in this video. If you have, be sure to give it a like. And if you've learned more than one thing, consider subscribing to this channel for more information and tutorials like this. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Hayden Fowson from FowsonFantasy.com, signing off.